Right, I mashed potato. Okay. Let's do a second first impressions for riding this thing for you guys. Actually, before I do that, you better switch the ABS off just in case. Down to off road mode, select it, hold down set. ABS off. Can't do that on a V Strom. Or a KLR. So, X Cape 650. It is, well, I think, a rather nice motorcycle. So, ergonomic wise, quite comfy. Uh, the seat is a bit scalloped, it sort of holds you in. Um, but it's sort of part and parcel for an adventure bike I think it's not a dual sword it's not a flat plank so does a reasonably good job in that respect uh, the seat itself has a couple of uh, parts that hang down nice and low so you can lock your knees into those rather than try and grip onto the hard plastic which if you've done a lot of adventure style riding, standing up and holding stuff with your knees, you know, you, they get a bit banged up holding on to hard parts of the motorcycle, so oop, getting a little bit of target fixation so it's nice to stand and be able to gently uh, keep your knees nice and comfy should probably get out of first gear, that's probably not helping so the foot pegs have removable rubber inserts which I've still got those in at the moment. The bike's getting broken in. It's done 337 kilometers. So when it gets to 1,000 kilometers, I'll be taking it up to Auckland and we'll find out uh, what's involved in a first service, how much it's gonna cost you at a dealership. Because uh, obviously you wanna go to a dealership uh, if you wanna keep a factory warranty. So power delivery is nice and smooth as you'd expect from a standard parallel twin. It doesn't have a 270 degree crank like a Tenere or anything does. It doesn't have that V-twin growl to it. It's more smooth and just... Suspension. Um, I'm going to probably play with that once I've had a bit more seat time just to try and make it as best as possible for my weight etc. I love the TFT dash on this thing, especially I've got it in night mode now, so that blacks out the rear of the screen, so it's not that bright white. Um, and it just looks good, I think. Um, the two modes you have on this, you've got, uh, I think it's called Ride, Ooh, a bit slippery, get to slow down a bit, don't want to drop this thing. Um, so you've got two rider modes, um, Ride mode and off-road mode. Off-road mode allows you to switch the ABS off, um, but they're just a display mode. So that basically means you can tailor what the TFT looks like, but <coughs> um, you're um, not getting any difference in power delivery or anything like that. Um, which is, I think, is kind of a good thing, especially if you're learning to ride an adventure bike. You get used to the power delivery of it on the road and then that way there's no surprises when you get off-road in terms of how the power is delivered. Which I think's a vulnerability. Oh, look at that lovely harbour. A uh, bit of a vulnerability of having rider modes that change the power delivery and stuff. So this is the sort of riding I imagine the XK doing lots of. Um, don't imagine it doing tough adventure rides like uh, a one big day type ride um, like proper dual sport style rides it's more for touring around exploring back roads and seeing the country and that is where I plan on taking it now the factory tyres are Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs uh, same as what you get on a Tenere, and 
yeah, they're taking some getting used to for me. <laughs> so I'm used to a full knobbly. I run a Michelin tracker on Rosie the Rally, um, which offers a surprising amount of grip everywhere I take it. Yes, longevity is not really its thing. Um, but yeah, I really have come to like an aggressive front tyre for off-road riding. It doesn't slip as much. I'm finding the Scorpion SCRs uh, just a little bit slippy in these conditions. I did have a bit of an oh shit moment when I was riding to my photo shoot location. Um, thankfully the bike didn't go down because it is too pretty to drop I think. Man, I love this road, just cruising along here. The other thing about this sort of being more of a, a cruisy back road bike is you actually get to enjoy the scenery of where you're going through. If you're taking it that little bit slow, you're not going hell for leather like we tend to when we jump on a dual sport. Um, it really does allow you to see more. So there's a couple of differences between this bike and the one I tested this time last year. Um, so this one is obviously in red, which there's three colours you can get the XK in. You can get it in red, you can get it in white, and you can get it in a silver. Uh, I test rode the silver bike last time. Currently my mates over at Kiwi Rider Magazine have a white one. Um, but honestly I think the red, it's an Italian brand, uh, you've got to go red and it just looks great. Particularly the way it accents black insert here around the dash so you've got this beautiful red section here it kind of makes it feel nice and premium where the silver I just didn't get that vibe it was it looked good and stuff but I think the red just pops in a way the silver doesn't red and black Whoa. Now, so that other bike also had uh, handguards. So, like I said in the first video, um, I'm hoping to do, get my hands on some of the official accessories for this bike, uh, namely the skid plate and the uh, crash bars. So, the Kiwi Rider guys are doing a test with the luggage, um, which, yeah, luggage is great. I don't really have a huge need for hard luggage in particular. I've got my soft GB luggage which I'm sure is going to fit on this quite nicely. So I'm thinking oh, I'm going to ask Moto Marini New Zealand if I can get my hands on those accessories, install them, do an install video um, and that'll give me a bit of peace of mind particularly on slippy days like today. Um, so you've got a lot of beautiful bodywork on this bike Ooh. and it is reasonably vulnerable um, if you're going to be doing back roads riding like this um, and yeah just that peace of mind would be quite nice I think it's about 1500 bucks for the crash bars um, and it's about $400 for the official skid plate pull over over here I think Gander just beautiful Absolutely beautiful. So seeing stuff like this, again, I know I'm harping on about it, but exploring, finding nice hidden valleys, nice views, that's what this bike's about. Touring as well, uh, we'll test the touring comfort, we'll do a nice big day in the saddle. I did have a weird fantasy about doing a thousand kilometres in a day on this thing, but um, yeah, Cyclone uh, Gabriel kind of ruined half the roads in the North Island. So all the fun roads, uh, on, particularly down the East Coast way, are a bit munted. So we'll avoid that. <laughs> well, we'll see how we go. I also don't know how my Marine NZ would appreciate me doing such <laughs> so many kilometres in one day, in addition to all the other content I plan on <laughs> producing with this bike. for the camera at the back. Um, da -da 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 -da. That's a freaking possum. That is very strange. You do not normally see possums on the side of the road during the daytime. They're nocturnal. 
and a pest. What the hell? So, where was I before I got distracted by the wildlife? Um, yeah, not really sure. Um, we are testing the spike for about three or four months, is my understanding. Um, and I am very much looking forward to it, because another thing this has over the Rosie the Rally is obviously power. So, it makes the idea of jumping on the bike on the weekend and going for a ride a bit more enticing, particularly doing stuff that's not quite this stuff. Doing a bit of riding on the road, on the tar. It's got the power to overtake and stuff where it's where the Honda 250 falls down. It's just not all that uh, on the highway. So yes, lost a bit of dirt ability grabbing this. Ooh, rocks. Um, but it's not what we're planning to do. Now definitely noticing here, back to the riding impressions, counterweighting is far more important on this bike than it is on mine. So on the 250 it's a nice light little bike. It's got that 21 inch front wheel and very aggressive tyres. Uh, this 19 inch front, 17 inch rear, wrapped in 50-50 tyres, um, and this weighs a good, what, 70 kilos more than the 250 Honda, uh, and you can just feel it sort of want to drop in as you're sort of leaning into corners. Um, it's just something I've got to keep reminding myself, because it has been a good while since I've gone for a good ride. Uh, I caught pneumonia in the beginning of April. Basically, that wiped out my entire April plans. Horses! I've got more horsepower than you horses! So we've done some dirt riding on this today. We're going to start making our way back home to Cambridge uh, along the brilliantly twisty Carthia Road. So this puts the X-Cape definitely, I think it has strong leanings towards the road. Definitely feels nice and planted um, despite the weather. So this looks like there's some more storm damage. Yep, road subsidence. Didn't, you wouldn't want to hit that in your car. Um, yeah, so we're on the road now. I had to switch into my winter gloves because um, riding with wet hands sucks, let's face it. Uh, ABS is back on after our little stop in Oprah hour um, because, hey, we're not going to go hitting any dirt anymore after that. Ugh, that was a terrible line. I'm really rusty, I've got to admit, I have not ridden enough in the last couple of months, mostly from catching pneumonia. Um, but yeah, my whole wide and tight out is just an absolute dog's breakfast. And I don't 100% have confidence in the Pirelli Scorpion STRs on particularly the slippy, slidey bits of the tar where there's no actual um, gravel on them. So uh, yeah, getting to getting to know the tyre. But what a brilliant road to ride on a motorcycle. So many twists and turns. Oof. Even if uh, there is a lot of damage to it at the moment. Uh, so this bike on the road. Uh, definitely, like I said, has some road leanings, um, being based on the architecture from the Kawasaki ER6 platform. Um, this shares its engine, and I believe its frame even, with the uh, Motomarini Seo Mezzo, uh, which is the 6.5 range. 
and those bikes are brilliant on the road. Uh, I think they've got an 18 inch front wheel, both of them. This has a 19, which means uh, pretty good on-road and off-road performance. It's not going to have the same off-road performance as say a Tenere with a 21 inch front wheel or a KLR. But considering, again, this bike's main competition is a V-Strom 650, it is a very nice motorcycle. So engine performance, uh, keep in mind we're still braking this bike in. It's in the braking period, it's got 364 kilometers on it now. Uh, so no massive full throttle um, pulls or anything in the plan. Uh, but it cruises along nicely, builds its power well. Uh, there's no unwanted surprises, which again, very important on a lambs bike. Maybe I should have kept the ABS off. All these gravelly bits in the road. Um, yeah. So it would be nice to have the handguards just to keep a bit of the elements off my hands. I might have gotten away with keeping my uh, summer gloves on. But switching into the winter gloves, still nice reach. Uh, don't know about you guys, I really hate wearing winter gloves. Just the, all the extra bulk from the padding and liners and waterproofing. Um, just find they're a big strain on my hands. Um, and I don't like how I can't feel stuff as well. So it would be nice if this road was nice and dry. Um, then it might push a little bit more. But for a damp road, I'm rather enjoying my time on this bike. The road position, the seating position holds you in nice, but you can also shift around. Um, but it feels almost like an attack position, you can sort of lean into it a bit. Gearbox changing, uh, changing the gears, sorry. Uh, pretty good. Um, downshifting, I didn't miss, managed to not get a gear change in. I'm not sure what happened there, if it was a rider error or not. Um, probably that. Um, again, bike is coming into its, well, bike's still in its break-in period. So things are loosening up and getting how they should. But overall, can't really complain about the performance. So 44 kilowatts or about 60 horsepower. And about 54 newton meters of torque, I believe. So it's got plenty of grunt to get you around. Now, the big fearing, while it is vulnerable off-road, um, without the crash bars, it is water getting inside my helmet. Um, what was it saying? Yeah, so while it's the big fearing's a little bit on the vulnerable side for off road riding, on the road it beautifully keeps the air and the wind and the elements off you. So I've got my wet weather jacket on. My oh, pants are still dry from going through the rain. Um, so, yeah, I'm calling that a win. Please stop here on red signal. Yeah, just as I thought. So, one thing I've noticed after riding the six and a halves, um, they've got very similar sized, or maybe even the same dash on them. But their dashes have a range to empty function, which the X Cape doesn't. Which would be quite nice actually, being a touring bike, knowing your range to empty. I said on my original test of this bike that um, I'm not a huge fan of its um, fuel gauge. It's not particularly friendly for just having a glance at it and going, alright, cool, yeah, need to do that. I've got no idea what side of the road I'm still meant to be on, by the way. I'm assuming I'm meant to be on the right hand side. Yeah, very much assuming. <laughs> All the subsidence on that. Oh, sketchy. 
So this is all damage from Cyclone Gabriel. Um, Alright, I think this. There we go. Whoops. Didn't mean to honk. Bit of glove problems. Uh, yeah, so Cyclone Gabriel's is just so many roads around New Zealand that are in a really nasty state, but it really sort of brings these adventure bikes into their own. Right, well, I'm not really sure there's going to be much more I can say about the road riding experience of this bike. Uh, and these current conditions, I think I've basically summed it all up. Um, bike's fine. <laughs> Uh, at the moment, can't really push it because of road conditions and ooh, sneaky bit of gravel there. Um, yeah, road conditions and the weather. Uh, so, we'll cut this here.